Oh boy, what a day it's been, eh? Lots of trades, lots of action, lots of conversations about different teams and different players over and over and over again, so let's calm the waters a little bit. And bring it back to the classics, because maybe we have ourselves a Vancouver Canucks post-game video. Vancouver against Vegas on the night of Thursday, March 7th, 2024. Don't worry, I have calmed my nerves down, and I am no longer salty that I'm getting absolutely destroyed in the finals of my fantasy league on Yahoo. I've been talking about this all year. And, you know, we're now in the finals, I was the number one team, and I'm playing off against the number two team, and the number two team, who has really bolstered his team up to get to this point, he is showing off why he is number two, because man, I am getting destroyed. Matt Dumba sitting out for trade-related reasons, Gabe Velarde getting injured, it's messed up my entire plan. And I am gonna lose this week as a result. But no matter how many opportunities I fumble, or how many opportunities my opponent ends up getting, we have ourselves some good things to talk about for the Vancouver Canucks. Some of the guys that are on my squad played well. Nick Waugh, point. Okay, good for him. Shea Theodore had a block in there. Good to see. Pedersen and Miller each had blocks. Some of them had points too, which is great. And I ultimately walk out of tonight saying, hey, the Vancouver Canucks, they beat the Vegas Golden Knights. They get their third win of the road trip. They have swept the entire series against the Anaheim Ducks 2-1, against the LA Kings 2-1, against the Vegas Golden Knights 3-1. The Vancouver Canucks are improving their goal differential. They're improving their goal against number, and they're doing so in a pretty convincing fashion because, man, oh man, was this game against the Vegas Golden Knights a good Good one. Now, I'm not going to lie. I didn't watch the first and second period of this game. I had my own ball hockey to go out there and play. That's part of the reason why I'm kind of okay now with getting completely cheesed and screwed over in fantasy because I had some real hockey to go out there and play. Had two goals and a nice assist too, so I'm happy about that. But the Vancouver Canucks kicked things off in this first period with a bunch of power play opportunities that unfortunately resulted in some bloody faces. Nails Hoglander got a high stick and it was not pretty to see. And the Vancouver Canucks, with a pretty good opportunity on their hands, they needed to capitalize on this. They needed to establish their dominance. They needed to make sure that they didn't fumble this momentum. And that's exactly what they did. First goal of the game, scored on the power play by Quinn Hughes, assisted by Elias Pettersson and Brock Besser. The two-man advantage ensues. Hughes takes the shot. It gets deflected out to the side. The Canucks play it around the boards. Pettersson on the right corner, back to the top of the umbrella. Hughes takes it, walks in, shoots, and he scores. Just as the two-man advantage expires and the Canucks take a 1-0 lead. Just a few seconds after that, though, you had Vancouver striking again. This time, it's a guy who hasn't really been in the lineup all too consistently, but when he is in the lineup, sometimes he makes some pretty good things happen. It's Phil DiGiuseppe who ends up taking the puck at the side of the goal off of a Niels Hoglander opportunity and just kind of sweeps it towards the net. It goes five hole on Aiden Hill, kind of fools everybody, and it only takes, what is that? Less than a minute for the Vancouver Canucks to go up 2-0 in this first period. From there, the Canucks had a few more opportunities that were notable. They had themselves a Teddy Bluger wrist shot right in front with about 7.35 to go. That was a pretty high danger chance. Second period, you have yourselves the Golden Knights striking early. All it takes is three minutes and 50 seconds for Michael Amadio, assisted by Alex Petrangelo and my boy Nick Waugh, to get up there on the board. It's a long shot. It's tipped in out in front. It's a two to one game. And at this point, the Vancouver Canucks had two options. Either A, they could let the Vegas Golden Knights come back and start to really amp up the momentum here, which I'd say they had a few opportunities, but Demko was equal to the task. Or B, the Canucks can respond right back and get over into that lead category once again. And that comes off of the stick of Connor Garland. It's Elias Lindholm who comes in on the rush with a shot. The rebound is out onto the side for Connor Garland to backhand it into the open cage. That's the 3-1 to one goal. That's the final goal of the game. And the rest of the night was just Vancouver clearing it, dumping it out, making sure that the Vegas Golden Knights did not get a single prime opportunity. 
And I will say, the goaltending battle in this one, pretty good. Aiden Hill had some impressive stops in the first. Thatcher Demko had some impressive stops in the second. You're really starting to see why these two guys are some of the top goalies in the NHL, especially when you talk about the teams in front of them doing as well as they've been doing. Vancouver, playing that full shutdown defensive lock style hockey in the third, was able to limit the Golden Knights' chances up until the very end. Like with five minutes to go, you started to see Vegas amping up the pressure. But all in all, the Canucks had more chances, they had better zone opportunities, they had let's just say better possession when they had the puck on their sticks. The Golden Knights definitely had a lot of time on attack towards that third period there, but the Canucks were doing a really good job at thwarting it away, and when I watch this game, all I gotta think about is, darn, this is a game where you're starting to see what this team at their peak can look like. Because Carson Soucy had himself a pretty defensively responsible game. The folks on Sportsnet 650 were raving about that Connor Garland-Elias Lindholm pairing. They were raving about Elias Pettersson's line. They were raving about Elias Mikheyev. They were saying that Mikheyev had some of the best hockey he's ever played in a Vancouver Canucks sweater in this game, not because of the scoring opportunities, not because of any shots or any breakaways, but because of the defensive presence of mind. The back-checking, the stealing, the pickpocketing, the the awareness of what he needs to do to prevent Vegas from having prime opportunities. Ilya Mikheyev, I'm sorry, buddy, but I feel like we kind of wronged you. This might have been the best gosh darn game that he's ever had with this team. And that's not even to mention the few offensive chances that he did have. I will say, even though I didn't watch the majority of this game, I only watched a third period, just the way this team was able to so calmly shut things down in their own zone, make it so that Vegas was having a tough time putting pucks towards the goal, easily clearing it, easily getting it to the line, dumping it down, making the change, rinsing and repeating, and getting the Golden Knights frustrated, that is what it takes to win hockey games. You know, that's not the way the Canucks beat the Golden Knights in games five and six in the Stanley Cup playoffs in 2020. That's not the way they won. They won because the Golden Knights were just pressing and pressing and pressing and Demko was making save after save after save. 970 save percentage is outrageous. This time around though, it's a lot more sustainable. The team was just straight up doing good defensive work and Thatcher Demko was there when he needed to be and the Golden Knights could not capitalize. So at the end of the day, I personally am kind of frustrated because of the rest of the NHL's festivities and all the other games that have been going on, all the points that my opponent seems to be getting from today's fantasy hockey stuff. I mean, I'm losing really, really bad. And it wasn't like that earlier today. I was actually in the lead in terms of projected and actual points earlier this morning, and now I am way behind because Philip Forsberg in Nashville got a hat trick, Igor Sharangovich got multiple points, um, what else happened? Like, Adam Pellick in New York got a bunch of blocks, and... Kaden Gooley, David Savard, oh my goodness, it's been bad. I'm done with fantasy hockey for the year. We're done. And uh, my guys in Vegas, I mean, Theodore was all right. Nick Waugh, all right. Miller Pedersen, all right. Quinn Hughes, he got himself a goal. You're welcome, Vancouver fans. You know why he got a goal? Because I dropped him in fantasy because he wasn't doing anything the past few games. Sure, he's been getting assists like every few games here and there, but when it comes to what my fantasy hockey league has been prioritizing... There are other guys that do more than Quinn Hughes because blocks and hits are oddly effective in this league. But either way, let me know your thoughts in the comment section below about the Vancouver Canucks defeating the Vegas Golden Knights 3-1 in Vegas and sweeping the road trip. LA, Anaheim, Vegas, LV going out here. Vancouver's coming and shutting things down. One goal against in each of these three games. What are your thoughts on how the Canucks played against the Vegas Golden Knights? What do you think needs to be discussed more so? You can talk about Lindholm, talk about Mikheyev, talk about the defensive structure, talk about how the team is legitimately winning games without Tyler Myers. That's kind of funny when you think about it, but thoughts in the comments section below. I hope you enjoyed this video. And bye.